Well, the debate on how the impact of new technologies, robotics, artificial intelligence, and the consequent industrial revolution is changing the way we live, work, and relate to one another is vibrant. The question is not anymore if or when these technologies will join us, but how. We are living a new chapter of human development, and the velocity of the changes enabled by technology today is not comparable with that of the first, second, or third industrial revolution. The market of jobs is rapidly changing, and this revolution is not anymore intergenerational, but it is intragenerational, and it is combining the uh, digital, physical, and biological worlds. So now, as new technologies uh, continue to overturn uh, industries and uh, taking over some of the tasks uh, usually performed by humans, workers globally uh, start to fear about the future of their jobs. In reality, what precludes humans for a, a real com uh, competitive in the uh, market of jobs is not the technology itself, rather is our mindset and our attitude to a changing system. Think that uh, the most uh, in-demand occupations, like data scientists, app developers, cloud computing specialists, uh, did not even exist five or ten years ago. And that the 65% of children entering in primary school today will end up in jobs that do not yet exist. So organizations have to reshape the balance between human workers and machines in order to optimize the impact and the talents. And we need to believe in a knowledge-based economy, which uh, is funded in, uh, by uh, innovative educational models, and professional profiles that can be able to adapt to change and think about future innovation trends and be entrepreneurs of, of themselves. Yes, but how? Well, I'm not here to give you the, the best solution for that, but as robotists and scientists, I have to think about this every day and plan my daily activities now in order to better um, think about the future technologies to be developed. Now, the good thing is that uh, history also for scientific and technological uh, revolution has a repetitive rhythm. And so we can and we should uh, think about uh, um, uh, past model to inspire future model and uh, use the past to inspire the, the future. So let me tell you a story which I think that is uh, quite perfect for today where we are celebrating the role of women and the importance of their perspective. And let me introduce you uh, to Ada Lovelace. Ada was the only legitimate daughter of the more famous English poet uh, Lord Byron. But not only that, she was the world's first computer programmer. And Ada, uh, when she was about one uh, month uh, old, and Lord Byron left London and uh, his, uh, his family, uh, the mother of Ada decided to educate her in uh, mathematics and science. She was uh, an aristocratic mathematician. So Ada was lucky enough uh, to uh, be educated in, uh, in um, uh, topics uh, usually not, uh, um, uh, not dedicated to, to women for, for that time. And because of the, her talent in mathematics, uh, when she was uh, a teenager, she started to work together with uh, uh, Charles Babbage, uh, also known as uh, the, father of, uh, uh, the father of computers. And while she was working with, uh, um, with Babbage, translating an article on, uh, on engineering, she added, she added some notes uh, that were then added to this uh, uh, article just as a supplementary material. But it turned out the importance of this note later because they contain what is considered to be the world's first computer program. Not only that, because while Babbage and his colleagues were focusing only on the capabilities of calculus of this first computer, 
uh, Ada uh, went beyond this, this vision and started to think about the future application of this uh, technology and uh, how these technologies could interface uh, with uh, the society and how the human could use that as a collaborative uh, tool. Um, the vision of Ada was uh, quite exceptional for, uh, for that era, and she defined uh, her approach uh, as political, uh, poetical science. The fact is that uh, Ada, education in mathematics and science, uh, found uh, a marriage in herself with uh, her passion uh, uh, on poetry that she got from his father, basically. And this, uh, this condivision of uh, mathematics and, and poetry uh, shaped her mindset in a multidisciplinary way, which opened her vision to look at the, a scientific problem for a, from a different perspective and start to talk about, about vision. Because multidisciplinarity is this, open your mind to look at the things from different perspectives, help your flow of thoughts to um, move in, in a, a more agile way and more flexible. So when I was studying uh, the last year of engineering and I was looking for a topic for my thesis, I was quite down because everybody was proposing me nice ideas but not really appealing for me. And then I attended the lecture and I saw this. And I was introduced in the beautiful field of uh, biorobotics, where you have to uh, look at animals, understand their mechanism of movements, uh, understand how they are able to interact with the environment, with objects, to interact with each other, and to be controlled in order to ex take inspiration and extract characteristics to develop new type of technologies and even robotic systems. I said, wow. Well, I'm completely in love with uh, the uh, world of animals and natures. And like, this is me when I was six years old, and this is me at 26 years old, after one year of thesis, uh, playing with the, with the octopus instead of the, of the dog. The objective of the thesis was twofold in that sense looking at the biological models, understanding the octopus, extract measurement that could be useful for development of new technologies. So on the other side, use engineering methodology to improve the knowledge of the animal itself. And this is me after six years of uh, engineering studies, training and measuring uh, uh, real octopuses. And the, the challenge was to uh, go into scientific studies using biological studies using uh, an engineering approach. But it was great to move across engineering and, bio and biology, work together with pure scient scientists, pure biologists, and also discover that these engineering tools, which were useful to extract numbers useful for robots, this, turned out that they were useful also for biologists itself. For example, by measuring the elongation of the arm, we discovered that female octopus used to uh, elongate, are able to elongate more their arms to catch a prey in respect to males. As usually, women are more active in this sense. <laughs> And the uh, core of the, of the work uh, was this uh, mutual benefit between biology and engineering. And this is what can accelerate the frequency of scientific discoveries and technological application. And this is the beauty of biorobotics where you have an ecosystem of researchers with a completely different background roboticists, engineers, mathematicians, computer scientists, neuroscientists that work, and many others, that work together to increase the scientific knowledge about the biological system, could be underwater animals, birds, human beings, and even plants, understand that more and extract principle to develop new technologies that can be more sustainable and uh, useful for, uh, for us. 
Now, in the field of biorobotics, you need uh, the specialized figure, uh, the pure uh, computer scientist or pure mechanical engineer. But because it's not easy for a biologist to talk with an engineer, you need also uh, of a figure that can act like a bridge among the different disciplines. That can be like backing scientists are, have a deep know-how of both science and technology, are continuously updated on the current and future trends, and know the different research groups in order to uh, promote a collaboration, partnership for other research joint projects. Um, and this is the beauty of biorobotics. And uh, the biorobotics uh, uh, has a lot of potential for creating technologies that are more sustainable for us. What is needed is uh, um, a new system of, uh, of education where we can open to new figures in the, in the scientific team, um, where we have to train people to uh, merge their, their passion with their educational training in order to think out of the box, to think different, and uh, have a visionary thinking in that sense. We have still a lot of challenges to, uh, to address from a technological viewpoint on the different aspects for biorobotics from the scientific and technological viewpoint. But I believe that multidisciplinary is, uh, um, is one of the uh, key enabling things. It, it is the muse for the poetical science and also for the robotic science. It could be the key for to enable a better understanding of, of our scientific world and for the development of technologies that are more sustainable for all of us. And thank you. <laughs>